mouse acceleration. Is it good? I mean, mouse acceleration is something we all have been told is really bad for improving your aim or even getting good aim on any FPS game. Every pro is against it outside of a few individuals that are really the odd person out. But is it true? Is it bad? Is there a potential here for those seeking more performance? You know me on the channel, always on the quest for better aim. It's why I make so many videos on the topic. There's something I'm very passionate about. I thought of taking my own advice and trying something new, diving into something that could potentially help my aim, and I even personally have been against. I've told you guys many times before, don't use it. It's not helpful. But I listened to all you guys in the comments and saw questions on this. But because like you all, I did my research on the topic and only saw a few video topics. I saw Linus do a video, also Penguify. Apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Really enjoyed your video. And I thought, you know what? This really inspired me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through the same exercise and record my thoughts, and hopefully teach somebody else the same thing, and maybe somebody's looking for a video topic. So let's start with a brief summary. What is mouse acceleration? Well, let us understand what happens when you turn it off. I put measuring tape on my desk, showcasing on Apex Legends, hitting a target from one distance to another. It doesn't change. Another example is inches per 360. You can see it takes 13 inches to do a full 360 at my current sensitivity, and that always remains the same to get to the same point. What I use for this video is Raw Excel, which I'm gonna put in the description. This is the version approved by Anti-Cheat Software and what I was using in Apex Legends. So let's see what happens when you turn it off though. Now I'm gonna be in game, but to sum it up, the faster you move your mouse, the higher the sensitivity gets. This of course sets all the values you put in and the way you want the graph to be. There's so many options. There is linear, natural, classic, power, and the way you tweak it can be even more granular. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a link in the description of a video I watched to understand every single category because I believe they did a wonderful job doing it compared to what I can do explaining it. After testing them all, I personally preferred linear the most. So why do this? Well, after all these confusing stats, why in the world would you ever consider mouse acceleration? Honestly, I feel very comfortable at a massive range of sensitivity after 1000 plus hours of aim training. I always felt I have massive pros and cons based on sensitivity ranges. Some moments I want a super low sensitivity, others, well, I want a fast one to be able to flick. So let's talk about that at a high level, because I think it helps explain your decision on maybe considering mouse acceleration. So high sensitivity versus low sensitivity. A high sensitivity you get speeds to target switch, but then you really need to have good refined muscle control to hit precision shots. Under pressure, that can be really difficult. And this can be good for games like Quake, Apex Legends, or anything with mobility and tracking a fast target. But low sensitivity, you get precision, but you lack that speed. This is for games like CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege, and Valorant, where you can predict where your enemy is and you can maintain speed on a tight window, but perhaps not on a full 360 movement without throwing out your whole arm or smacking the side of your keyboard or desk. So that leads us to a weird spot for sensitivity like Apex Legends, which really inspired me to use it. You need precision accuracy on small shots with a wingman or tracking at a distance, well then, you're going to instantly need to flick, wall bounce, and do all kinds of insane movement at close range. So is there a solution? I felt that, because I ran a lower sensitivity prior, and I did not need to worry about flicking on enemies moving sporadically. You can predict an Apex Legends, but that movement can get pretty hectic. This is why I decided to finally cave and try this out, and also saw these fantastic videos about the topic. Now let's talk about why the pros dislike mouse acceleration. So it provides a variety, then why do people hate it so much? Well, the answer is because setting up, as you can see, is very overwhelming. It is doing a whole lot and will technically requires more time to learn. That is a question mark for me. All the gameplay aiming you see in today's video is with mouse acceleration on. So that's what I'm kind of peppering in the background as we talk about this and also an effort to keep the video shorter. Even also mouse acceleration has a misconception of the dreaded enhanced pointer precision which is Windows Mouse Acceleration, which has a very difficult curve to learn. But it's because of this, it provides a really bad reputation. I agree that the graph Windows Mouse Acceleration is, is one that spirals quickly, and while some have learned to use it, for me, it just doesn't feel right. And that's the key, right? Making sure that it feels right. Now, I spent over 24 total hours probably playing to adjust to mouse acceleration. 
The reason I did not go longer is I wanted this video to prove a point that the brain can adjust and really learn quickly. That muscle memory is not a thing. It is all about mouse and muscle control. If you cannot control the mouse at a lower or higher sensitivity, that is not memorizing every motion, but having the forearm, finger, and hand muscle strength to control it. So let's talk about my justification on my mouse acceleration settings that I decided to go with after practicing with them all. Now this is my reasoning, and perhaps this can help you find your own reasoning as well, but I really hone in on linear. Let me explain my reasoning for each stat. I even changed my mouse pad, which is why I'm using now the soft FX0 to provide more of slowdown and resistance. I switched also to 13 inches per 360, which as you know, my sensitivity was a little bit slower before, kind of averaging around 15.5, and even some instances would lower it down depending on what I was trying to achieve. Now the stats I use is 0.5, which lowers the sensitivity down by lowering it down to 26 inches per 360, I believe. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that number, of course. But remember, I mentioned there is a spectrum of aim I felt comfortable with. When aim training, I could drop this down to around 26 inches per 360 and still maintain quite a bit of speed. It's just I lost that 360 movement. And well, I put my acceleration to 0 0.02. Now this stat, I realized, skyrockets really quickly. And then I pretty much hit apply and was ready to rock. I decided not to put a cap on this is that when linear felt i mean there's only so fast it can really move but it kind of gave me a perspective of how fast i needed to actually move and not really cap it it felt really nice it felt organic and again i won't lie i tried the other ones and the only other one that felt nice to me was natural i like this but i preferred again like i mentioned the uncap of my speed so i can do some really insane flicks because that's what really mattered is at that point whenever i needed a target switch i needed to target switch i had a reason to flick it's why i felt it balanced it out so let's segue to what I learned. Early on, I was honestly shocked at how quickly I was able to understand what acceleration was. I was in the test range and it did not feel as bad as I thought it was. I was always so against acceleration, even preach never to use it. But how could I preach never to use something if I never tried it? I think it's because I was way too inexperienced to understand how to teach it like I am currently doing for you guys, but also comprehend it to be honest. I also realized how niche this is. It almost feels like I have a relationship with a computer where I can feel the tuck and release of the mouse with the acceleration. I have not seen it described this way, so follow me with this. I described this to my fiance. It's like a tug of war with a friend. Someone pulls in a rope and they let up, giving you more tug or instant resistance. That is what I felt when I was playing. I could feel the computer telling me and tugging when I slowed down but let up the reins when I sped up my arm movement to provide me that speed I was looking for. It was a really interesting sensation, but one I, I was very much for, especially when you're looking for that precision and accuracy. I found because I personally preferred a lower sensitivity, the fact I went on a slower mouse pad for that tug I mentioned heightened that sensation. Actually what I did was I initially switched to the G305, which is a bit of a heavier mouse, but I went to heavier mouse so I understood the tug more. Then once I got comfortable with that tug towards around the 15 hour mark, I decided to use the G Pro Super Light again. So did it ruin, as peeps would call, my muscle memory? It did not. As you can see, this is me switching back after a few days and I was typing the script of this video. Because I have mouse control, I could easily switch back and forth. Throughout the video, you saw all the footage showcasing some of my highlights. My shot was on and I still feel comfortable. I mean, this is a great solution if you have limited desk space. Now remember, this was footage from a very short time span from my last video explaining our aim trainers good, but that is a point, showcasing what could be done in a short amount of time using mouse acceleration. Now for aim lab mouse acceleration, I found pretty much all my scores went up. The only one I struggled with honestly was most was balancing speed on grid shot, but how often do you actually aim that way? The tracking scenarios got even easier, my precision shots felt better, but my speed also doing 180s was cleaner. I just needed to move fast to get that flick. I think perhaps the thing I need to focus on is maintaining speed, and that's going to come with time. Perhaps I will do a brief follow-up video in a month if I was able to find that balance in terms of maintaining a lot of speed. But for a real 24 hours of actually playing, felt pretty good. So the next question, should you use this? I mean, it's something to try out, but this is definitely not for everyone. Like I mentioned, it hits a niche market of peeps who are looking for the balance of high versus low sensitivity. 
Worst case, you give it a go and you learn something you don't like, and hopefully learn more of how sensitivity can work. Because knowledge is really key in power, and the more knowledge you have, the more you can make informed decisions on how to actually improve your aim. I would also recommend peeps who get overwhelmed with the setting, who are too obsessive about always changing your sensitivity, probably avoid this. There's just so many options, it's just going to freak you out. Keep things simple and find what works. So to wrap up, I think we hit on the main point. I'm going to keep using this for a while. My next streams that I'll do every Sunday, you stop on by, ask for an update, I'll give you one. I'll also do a recap video at the end of the month just to see how it, how it felt, if I'm going to still stick with it. But for now, I like it. And just for science and the effort, I'll provide you guys more information of how it worked. Hope you guys found today's video enjoyable. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.